During this virtual macaque lesson, we are going to be creating this super bright slice of delicious looking birthday cake. Now for this, I am using very simple materials. One single sheet of drawing paper, a sketching pencil, I have an eraser to take out my guidelines, and I have a few colored pencils here. It really doesn't matter what brand of pencil color you use for this. Now, to begin our rainbow party cakes, what we need to do is sketch a very basic outline of the shape of our cake to begin with. So what I am going to do is start with a triangle that's kind of laying on its side at the top, which is gonna be the top section of my cake. So I'm gonna come down a little bit and do a small visual marker, a little spot with my pencil there. So if you imagine where roughly halfway is, about here, I'm a little bit higher up. So come halfway down your page and go just a little bit higher up for your first spot. And then I'm gonna reach back into my paper and add another little spot and then a third one up here. So I've got three little spots so I can have my triangle at a slight angle. Now what I'm gonna do is lightly join them up. When we're sketching, we want to tickle the paper as lightly as we can. I'm actually pressing a little bit harder just so you can see the lines. Make sure you keep it a nice, gentle little tickle. There we go. Now what I'm going to do, this is the top of my cake here. I want a big cake that is stacked with lovely rainbow colors, lots of different layers. So I'm gonna do a long line that comes all the way down to here, this is gonna be the base of my cake. So here we go, nice gentle line. Again, I'm making my lines a little bit darker so you can see them. And I'm gonna do another one at the back here for the back edge of my cake. Now I'm gonna join up the base of my cake here with a parallel line that is running parallel with the top edge of my cake here. So when lines run parallel, it means they never touch. They will never get closer together and they will never get further apart. They always stay the same distance away and they'll go on and on and on forever. So I'm gonna come down a little bit. That's how my parallel line is gonna go along here. So let's join that up. There we go. Lovely. Well, we have a cake-ish looking shape. We've got to jazz it up a lot, but we are getting there. Now, what I want for my cake is Hmm, I'm gonna do red, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So I need five layers. So I'm gonna do my visual markers again to try and get them nice and even. So one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Little markers on the other side. One, two, three, four, and five. Lovely. Let's join them up. Again, keep your lines nice and light. Tickle the paper. Your paper should be giggling because you're pressing so lightly with your pencil, you're tickling it. Again, mine are a little bit darker so you can see it a little bit more. Okay, that is one nice looking slice of rainbow cake, but you know what it's missing? Yes, the frosting. Who doesn't love frosting all over their cakes? So what I'm going to do is take this rather boring triangle I've created at the top here, and I'm going to have ooey gooey frosting kind of glooping down over the sides. I don't know about you, but that's how my cakes always end up when I frost them, so I'm gonna keep it the same. So my back edge here, I'm gonna do a little bit of a wobble to show that frosting on there. Don't worry, we'll take away the lines that we don't want in a second. Let's finish the frosting first. And then it's glooping over the back, so it's kind of neat there. And then down the side here, I'm gonna do like a bloop, bloop going along where it's all kind of gloopity glooping over the side of my cake. Oh, it's something about drawing frosting. It makes me hungry straight away. And I'm still leaving a lot of my top section showing because this is gonna be red. Red, yellow, green, blue, purple. I still want to see my red layer. So I'm making sure my frosting doesn't come too far down. I still want to see that. And then my frosting is gonna come down the back of my cake here. And on the inside. And my frosting is kind of pulling onto the table. 
Hey, I'm an artist, not a cake decorator. This is normally what my cakes end up like, but they taste good. There we go. Well, that's starting to look like a slice of rainbow birthday cake. What else could we do to make it look more like a birthday cake? A candle. Absolutely, we need a candle on here. Now, here's how you can really make it your own. Whether this is to celebrate your birthday or somebody else's birthday, do something on top that represents that person. I'm just going to do one single candle on mine, but you get those lovely candles that come in number form. If someone's five, if someone's going to be 10, you could actually do the numbers on the cake for the candle. If it's your dog's birthday, perhaps you could have a bone sticking in the cake. The possibilities are endless. Do whatever you like. Now, I'm just going to do a single candle in mine. So I'm going to do a little spot in the middle there. Now a visual marker going up. I want my candle to come to about here because my candle's going to be lit. I also need space for the flame. So I've got to make sure I don't go too far up. There we go. Now I'm gonna join my two visual markers with a little stick. And that little stick is indeed my candle. There we go. A tiny little wick and a teardrop shape on top for my flame. Yep, definitely looking like a birthday slice of cake right now. We can do so much more to it though. We're going to make it look even more spectacular. Now, rainbow, rainbow candies. The first thing that jumps to my brain is gumdrops and gobstoppers, like really colorful, shiny, bright candies. This is your cake. If you want to have gummy worms creeping out of it, you go for it, it's your cake. I'm gonna do colorful gumdrops on mine and I'm gonna have them going around the outside. So I'm going to do one little circle, two little circles and three. So I'd have a pattern of gumdrops going around my whole cake. And then I'm gonna have, let's see, I'm gonna do sprinkles on the cake, but I'm not gonna draw them. I'm just gonna add color for them later. So we can add that. A little bit later on. Now my cake is floating in the air. That's a little bit odd. Let's put the cake on a plate. So I'm gonna do like a little oval shape going around the cake to show that it is sitting on a plate. So here we go. It's quite low down. I'm on the second layer up here, the second layer of my gorgeous cake. Whips around one side and the other. My plate leaves the paper on either side. If you're working on a large sheet, you might be able to get all of your plate in. This is my focal point. I'm not super worried about the plate. Definitely focusing on the cake here. I'm gonna whip around the front with that same oval. Ta-da! My cake is no longer floating in the air, but my plate is. So again, just to pull it down and ground it, I'm gonna do a tabletop line. A line running parallel, we know what that means, running along the bottom of the page, this line here, this line is running parallel, so they never touch. They always stay the same distance apart. So my tabletop line here and my bottom of the page, those two lines are parallel. If your tabletop's going like this, straighten it back up again, just a little bit. There we are, we are making progress. Now what I'm gonna do is use my eraser to take out all the lines I don't want so it doesn't get confusing. So I'm not going to be able to see my cake through the frosting. So let's get rid of those lines. You're certainly not gonna see the cake through the gumdrops. So let's take those lines out. There we go, down through the frosting. Take a second, really think about what lines you're taking out. Is it one that needs to disappear? Lean back and look at your whole cake. Oh, that's making me hungry. Good job. Okay. There we are. Take a little bit of this line away. Just a little bit. I still want most of this line here. All right. Oh, the candle. Missed one. Okay. Speaking of candles, let's just add some twirls to it. I like those candles with the stripes going down them. We can jazz that up with some color as well. Now I'm gonna do a couple of gumdrops here down on the plate that's rolled off my cake. Just another excuse to get color in a different area of the page to make it look even more party-ish. Now, speaking of parties, what else could we add to this cake to make it look as though there's a party going on around the outside? 
I'm thinking streamers, really colorful, twirly, beautiful streamers that bring some movement in and just create some excitement. It's a party, let's bring it to life. So I'm going to start, I've got lots of space over here. Relax, relax your wrist and just let the motion flow. So let's start here and go, whoop, like a little roller coaster there, that was fun. And I'm gonna do another one coming along the bottom of my plate here. So let's not think about it too much. Remember it's pencil, you can erase it and move it around if you want to. So coming in from the side. Oh, I like that one, that one was really fun. And then I still have space up here, so I think I might just do maybe one little curly coming in from the side there. Now, I'm going to leave mine like that. You do not have to be done. You could do anything in the background, perhaps confetti falling down, all different colors, lots of different ways to sneak some explosive colors in here. So I'm going to be done with my sketch, and I'm ready to start blasting some color on this party cake to really bring it to life. Now when I do pencil color, I like to go in with my lightest color first. So I am going to start with yellow. Now when I add yellow, I'm not just adding it to one area. I'm going to add yellow wherever it's going to be featured through my entire cake. So if you're going to do different color, perhaps you don't want rainbow, perhaps you want different shades of pinks and purples, or you want a solid blue cake, then follow that color pattern for you. I am showing you how to create an explosive rainbow cake. Your cake is yours. You can change it up however you like. So my top layer here, that's going to be red. My second layer down, this is going to be yellow. So using the flat of my pencil, not the pointy bit, the flat. I'm gonna lay my pencil down and start adding a nice coat of bright yellow over this entire section. Now, to me, yellow is the light bulb color that goes underneath other colors and makes them really glow and shine. So I'm not afraid to put pressure on my pencil and really get that color to pop out. Oh, that looks delicious. Wonderful. Now I'm thinking this streamer later on is going to be green. So I'm gonna have some yellow shimmering through there as well. So this time using the point, starting at the top, wisping down, following the shape. It does not have to be perfectly neat and tidy. It's super fun, nice, loose, wispy pencil strokes. Nice and bright, there we go. Now. One area that's definitely going to be yellow is the flame of the candle. So I'm pressing nice and hard on the yellow section of the flame. And then around the outside, I'm gonna press lightly and just do a little bit of a glow around that flame. It's just gonna glow a little bit. Very light. There we are. And let's see, where else do I need yellow? I'm going to do this gumdrop. Now my gumdrops are going to be shiny. So what I'm going to do is sketch a little crescent on the back of my gumdrop there. Can you see that? It's almost like a frown upside down here. That is going to stay white. That's gonna be a highlight. So using the point of my pencil, pressing nice and hard to get a lovely bright finish, Coloring my gumdrop and leaving that crescent shape white. There we go, that is one shiny gumdrop. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I have another gumdrop. So same again, I want that nice crescent shape on top. Same position as this one. All my gumdrops will have that crescent in the same position. So pressing nice and hard. Beautiful. Now, planning ahead again, this tassel on the table, this little streamer here is also going to be like a yellowy, reddy orange color. So let's go through there, whipping the pencil through, short, sharp strokes following all around those twirls and curls, like a little roller coaster. Nice and bright. Okay, I think I'm done with my yellow. Hmm, wait a second. No, I'm not. So yellow, green, red, yellow, green. Now green is blue and yellow mixed together. To create a brighter green, add more yellow. So if I add a light base of yellow 
and then go over the top with green it will make my green look even brighter clever blending with pencil color to really illuminate your colors now i'm done with my yellow lovely so what i'm going to do now is add some orange so i'm starting at the top i'm going to do orange in the center of my flame here so a smaller teardrop shape right in the middle there we go and i'm going to add a bit of orange just like a little bit of a low light whipping around the lower section of my gumdrop here now i did say i was going to do some very colorful sprinkles on my cake so using my orange i'm doing short little i don't know what you would call them little disc shapes i, I guess like that some are sliding down with the frosting there sitting at the bottom when i add sprinkles to my cake most of them end up around the outside of the cake what can i say i try so I'm going to add some sprinkles down on my plate as well. There we are. And then this little guy down here is going to have a little bit of orange low down as well. And then my streamer, this one's going to be a ready orange color. So I'm whipping through again, using the point, nice wispy lines right the way to the end. Ooh, those are fun look at that our cake is starting to come to life wonderful okay uh one last thing i'm going to do with my orange is so red yellow this is my yellow section i'm going to accent it with a little bit of orange to create some more depth in there so around the outside not pressing super hard i'm using a very light pressure as i come into the sponge section in the middle i'm getting even lighter with the pressure so my orange is a tiny bit darker on the outside and a little bit lighter as I come in. I'm going to be repeating that on each section to really bring this slice of cake to life. There we go. Okay, now I'm done with my orange. On to red. Okay, I'm going to start with the red section here, which has frosting pouring down over it so I've got to be careful I'm going to use the point to go around the area first there we go being nice and neat then when I'm happy I've gone around little circle motion round and round to fill it in there we go we will be adding a little bit of shadow under our frosting later on, but for now, we just want a lovely bright red up there. Oh, that's looking wonderful. Okay, red is a wonderful color for a gumdrop, so let's go for it. First of all, don't forget your crescent shape. Sketch that in first so you know where to avoid with your pencil color. Look at that. So again, using the point, putting on pressure getting a lovely burnished effect burnishing is when you really squish down the tooth of the paper lay a lot of that pencil wax down and it creates a really slick shiny surface that's what we want there we go look at that thing it glows in the dark beautiful i love that so much i'm going to do the same down here so a little crescent shape around the outside whoever gets this for their birthday is going to be quite lucky i should think it would really make their day who doesn't love a good slice of rainbow cake there we go and then my streamer here very lightly not as much as the orange or the yellow just a little accent of the red nice and hard now I might even just add a tiny bit of red just on the lower section of my yellowy gumdrops to get them to stand out. Oh, I think that is looking fabulous. Maybe a tiny bit more in the candle too. Pencil colors, you can just layer them for days. Wonderful, okay, so red, orange, yellow, done. Oh, not done, we forgot the sprinkles. Remember every color? We didn't do yellow either. We should really add a little bit of yellow just a couple little sprinkles 
Now I'm doing ones that are a little bit longer. You could do like polka dot sprinkles if you wanted to. Let's just sneak back to the yellow and get a couple of those in there. Yep, that's what we need. Delicious. Okay, now I'm done with those. And I'm going to go to my green. So with my green, red, yellow, green. So over the top lightly again, using the flat of the pencil. Yep, definitely starting to get a rainbow looking cake here. Wonderful. If you have a different pattern going, perhaps you've got pinks and purples or something, just stick to the pattern that you've got. There we go. Lovely. Okay, now I also want this streamer here to have a greeny tint to it. So again, using the point, lots of pressure, whipping down, following that little roller coaster twirl there, all the way to the bottom. There we are. Look how scruffy it is. That's what we want. We want that really nice, loose, sketchy look. And we're going to have a lovely finished cake. The two are going to really look wonderful together. Now, this is going to be a green gumdrop. So again, crescent shape first. And then press nice and hard with your green using the point. There we go. Lovely. Light green down, dark green to accent. So starting on the outside of this one, light pressure. This dark green stands out quite nicely without pressing too hard. Well, press as hard as you need to. All different brands of pencil are different. Press until you're happy your green is standing out. So just a little bit around the outside so your green layer looks a little bit darker on the outside and lighter in the middle. We're trying to create as much depth as we can with this cake. And then again, we're just going to bring our little streamer to life by doing a little bit of dark running down using just the point. Woo! And then a little bit of dark under that gumdrop as well using the point there. Wonderful. Same on. Oh, you know what? I'm done. I thought I had another gumdrop. Not quite done. Let's get a couple of green little sprinkles on here. There we are. Okay, now I'm ready to go to my blue. Wonderful. Now with the blue, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've got white frosting and I want to add a little bit of a cool blue shadow. So my highlight, the light is bouncing off my gumdrops here. So my shadow is going to be on the underside and further away from those highlights. So what I'm going to do very lightly, do not press hard. We're just adding a little tint of blue to the very edge down here of your frosting. Don't press hard, just a little tint. Lovely all the way along a little bit underneath your gumdrops a little bit of shadow there tiny bit running along the crease of the cake where it folds and goes down and a teeny bit under your candle as well there we go oh forgot we have frosting on the table a little bit down there too Delicious. Okay, down to my light blue section here. So again, using the flat, running the pencil along, getting a nice flat covering of that lovely light blue to begin with all over. And then we will accent with the darker blue over the top. There we go. Very nice. I'm going to do a bit of shadow running down one side of my candle here. So very, very lightly, just on the left hand side, away from my light over here on the right. 
There we go, a little bit of shadow there. Now I'm thinking ahead to my plate. I'm gonna have some gray areas on my plate. So I want to add a little bit of a light blue just around the back edge of my plate here. Pressing light, you do not need to press hard for this. And just a little bit running underneath my cake as well, which will eventually turn into a shadow to bring it to life. You can go over your sprinkles as well. When you do that, all it does is makes it look as though your sprinkles are in the shadow too. There we go. A little bit under my gumdrops and my streamer. There we are. I'm done with my light blue. Let's go in with the dark blue now. And what I'm going to do again around the outside here, a little bit of dark. I actually want to bring my dark green down a bit. I've ended up with a bit of a white gap there. How did that happen? Never mind. Filled it in with the green. Ta-da! Okay, back to the blue. So a little bit more pressure on the outside. Taking it off towards the center. So your little layer of blue sponge looks a little bit lighter towards the middle and darker on the outside. There is no denying this is a rainbow cake now. Look at this thing. Yep, I think if you went to the end of the rainbow, you would find a slice of this sitting there. Beautiful. Okay, so my candle, I want to have blue stripes. You could do rainbow, you could do polka dots, you could do whatever you want. If you've done numbers, do something totally different. If you've done a dog bone or something crazy, perhaps you have like a unicorn horn sticking out. It's your cake. Whatever you choose to do, decorate it however you like. I'm going to go in, pressing nice and firm with my blue here, getting my little stripes on there. Burnishing it again, remember using the point to really kind of grind down the tooth of the paper and get a nice shiny surface. There we go. And I'm going to accent a little bit of my light blue shadow with just a tiny squiggle of the dark blue. You can really layer up pencil colors and create some absolutely fabulous depth. We're just hinting at little bits of depth in this one, but my goodness, you can spend all day layering up different colors. There we are. One other thing I forgot, I wanted to do this streamer over here blue and I completely forgot about that. So with my light blue, let's start over here. Wisping using the point. There we are. Take the dark blue through as well. Wonderful. Now I'm not done with the dark blue. I'm going to leave that one over here and switch up to my purple neck. So purple, the bottom layer that's holding all the cake together. So using the flat here, let's get in and fill that in. All the way around, right up to the streamer. This one's a little tricky because I've got more things to kind of go around the outside of, so I'm slowing down as I come to anything. No matter what you have on the table, whatever you've decided to add to yours, be nice and careful. I don't wanna go over my streamers. The streamer is lighter and it's in front, so it should really jump out next to the darker purple shade. There we are. Now I'm gonna use blue here to create a dark edge around my purple but it's not actually going to look like a dark blue because purple is blue and red mixed together. So if I add a little bit of blue to my purple, it's going to look like a darker shade of purple. Let's try it. So down low, pressing a little bit harder, taking off the pressure as I come up. And do you see how we're ending up with a nice dark purple shade down there? Lovely. All different brands of pencil color give you slightly different shades, so don't worry if yours looks a little different. Every piece of artwork is different. There we go. Oh, I like that. And then I want to add a couple of little blue sprinkles to my cake as well. So I'm just adding a few little sprinkles in there. 
Lovely. Okay, now my tabletop back here. I'm actually going to use a bit of purple and press a little bit harder along my tabletop line. Take off the pressure as I come down towards my plate. There we are. Do the same on the other side. Nice and hard, taking off the pressure as I come down towards the plate. There we go. Being careful not to cut into the streamer. There we are. Now I'm doing an odd mix of colors in the background. I've got really super bright primaries and a few secondaries on the cake. I want to do an odd mix of color to separate it from everything in front. So I'm actually going to take some yellow over now. You'll see later on what a difference this makes. So taking the yellow and the purple over. There we go. Blending those two together. And I'll do some shadow on there a little bit later. You know what? Let's go ahead and add some purple down through this streamer as well. Why not? Let's just get all the rainbow colors going through the streamers. Beautiful. Love it. Now one extra color I want to add is a nice gray through my plate here. So a little bit harder on the back edge. As I come down, taking off the pressure, getting a little bit lighter on the, on the surface of the plate, just darker around the outer edge there. Same underneath, so where the cake and the plate come together, I want it to be nice and dark in there. Do you see how that separates the plate and the cake? Kind of lifts the cake up and pulls the plate down at the same time. There we are, all around the frosting. Again, taking off the pressure as I drift away from that dark shadow that's close to the cake. A little bit dark under the streamer there where it's touching. Same on your gumdrops. There we are, the back of this side of the plate as well, which you can't really see a huge amount of because of that big mound of frosting at the base of the cake there. There we are, and then just a little light sheen of gray, kind of around the front of the plate there. Wonderful. And let's just bring our purple down very lightly in front. We might as well. We've got a little bit of space there. So just press lightly. The space that you have down here, perfect space to sign your work or even put a little message if it's for somebody to brighten their birthday. And again, to get that same combination of color that's in the background, just lightly take over a little bit of yellow as well. So you can see it's all part of the same table because it's got the same colors running through, back and front. There we are, looking fantastic. Now what I wanna do to really bring my cake to life is add a nice sharp dark outline using black. Now it's very important that your black pencil is nice and sharp for this so you get a lovely fine outer edge. We're also going to add some shadows too to really bring this cake to life. It is looking delicious. So I'm going to start on my actual cake. So using the point, I'm doing short, sharp, wispy strokes following the very edge of the frosting. Take your time. Okay, you've done amazing, absolutely amazing. We don't want to rush the outline and end up with squiggle wiggle lines everywhere. Look at that. Look how much the black outline just makes it pop forward. Imagine that everywhere. Now let's do it. Okay, so short, sharp lines. We're going to continue around the entire cake, every single layer, the plate, the gumdrops the streamers, everything. And then we'll come back and build up shadow in a couple of areas. So here we go, short, sharp, dark lines. Stop and sharpen your pencil as much as you need to. The duller your pencil gets, the thicker your line will get. And we want them to be lovely and thin and dark. So stop and sharpen your pencil.
There we go. Look at that gorgeous cake standing out. But we're not done yet. We're going to just increase the shadow a little bit more in a couple areas. So I'm going to rotate to the side to make an easier angle and start by just building up a little bit of a darker edge on the lower left hand side of each of these gumdrops. Yummy. Same on the gumdrops that I have on the table here. With the black, just do a little bit of shadow. The black is powerful, very powerful, lovely. And the shadow that's underneath as well, we already have that lovely cool blue there. I'm making that shadow a tad more dramatic by running a little bit of black lightly over the top. Ooh, that looks yummy. Now, to create a little bit of height on my frosting, underneath on the red section here, I'm gonna do a little bit of shadow lightly with my black right the way up to the frosting that will just help to lift my frosting off the cake a little bit there we go so following the shape of the frosting so down onto the yellow a little bit there as well nice light pressure it doesn't take very much at all there we are so lift that up a little bit going to do a tiny bit going down the side here not much now I already have the shadow on the plate you can enhance it a little bit more with your black if you want to to get it to really stand out remember the darkest area of shadow is going to be where your cake meets the plate and then as your shadow comes away it's going to get a little bit lighter so taking off the pressure as your shadow drifts away. I'm gonna do a little bit of shadow, nice and light, just under my plate as well. A little rim under there to help lift my plate up off the table a little bit, where the rim of the plate comes up. And again, at the back here, my tabletop, a little bit of black lightly over the top so you still see that lovely purple and yellow showing through. It darkens my table, my plate is darker, and my table is darker and everything on my cake is lovely and bright and really stands out. There we go. Nice and light right down on the table here. There we are. Make sure you've got a nice shadow very lightly running down one side of your candle, whatever kind of candle you have added. And I'm just gonna add a little wispy dark line going down low on each section of my cake for a little bit of shadow there, just a little bit. You can add some texture if you want to, do a couple little stipples to show that spongy texture. Again, totally up to you how much detail you want to go into on yours. I just want to go in and make the bottom of my plate here a little bit brighter, my tabletop. I feel like it could be a little bit louder to match the rest of my beautiful cake. And then over with the yellow, getting a strange color combination, but it works perfect for my table. And there we have our finished slice of party cake. All beautiful different rainbow layers. Now whether it's your birthday or somebody else's birthday, this will really help to brighten your day and their day. This is a super fun piece of work that you can really just explore, experiment with different colors, create different styles of cake. I did a simple slice of cake. You could do anything. You could do an entire cake if you wanted to. Remember, you can add features as you go, as ideas come to you. I had gumdrops on mine. Perhaps you've done something totally different. Whatever you have decided to do, I would love to see your amazing creations. So please share them to our Instagram or Facebook in the comments. You can even upload them on the student portal on Virtual Macart. Please, please share your delicious creations. I am very excited to see them.